Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Modern Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, your husband! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hear all about it. Yes, hear about how you fellas and girls can get a swell, complete miniature model farm. It's the Quaker model farm. Quaker pup wheat and Quaker pup rice, the swell tasting breakfast cereal shot from guns, are making an almost unbelievable offer. You can get 46 different detailed scale models and all, including farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals. They're yours at no extra cost. There's nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. No waiting either. Listen for full details in just a few minutes. A light snow was falling as Ned Johnson entered his mine that was located about ten miles north of Dawson City. As he disappeared into the entrance, the stealthy figure of a half-breed emerged from the falling snow. The half-breed hesitated only long enough to make sure that Ned's tracks led into the mine. Then, shielding a match from the wind, he lighted a fuse that dangled from something he carried, threw the bundle into the mine, and ran. Suddenly, there was the sound of an explosion. Rocks and snow tumbled down the hillside, and the mine entrance was closed. At last, there was silence, and the snow fell quietly and steadily, covering all signs of human footprints. It was almost a week later that Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police sat with Ned's son, Bob, in their cabin about a half mile away from the mine where the tragedy had occurred. A big black and white husky dog sat beside his young master, his head on the boy's knee. Isn't it funny, Sergeant, the way dogs seem to know when you're unhappy? Blackie hasn't left my side since Dad died. I hope you won't mind telling me all you know about your father's death, Bob. I know it was an accident, but I'd like to hear more if you don't mind talking about it. I'll be glad to tell you anything, Sergeant. There really isn't much to tell. I went into town with Uncle Jim for some supplies. When we came back, Dad wasn't here. Uncle Jim lives in his own cabin about a quarter mile from here, so he went right on home. Was this in the afternoon? Yes, it was almost supper time when we got back here. And Dad didn't come home. I I got Uncle Jim and went to the mine to look for him. It was all caved in. Well, when we found Dad... Well, and... you don't have to tell me that part of it, Bob. I talked to your uncle. Was your father ever careless with dynamite? Oh, no, not at all, Sergeant. He never wanted me around when he was blasting. I, I guess that's why he did it on the day I went to town. He was always afraid I'd get hurt. Something must have been wrong with the fuse. Of course, there's plenty of accidents like that, but your father always seems so careful. He was. But I guess accidents can happen no matter how careful you are. What are your plans, Bob? I'm going to stay right here. Uncle Jim thinks I ought to sell out to him and go to school, but I don't think so. Might be a good idea, Bob. Would you like to go to college? Yes. And I intend to someday. But Dad was sure that there's a rich vein of gold in that mine, and I don't want to sell it. It'll take a long time to dig it all out again, but I'm 18. I don't see why I can't work it with Uncle Jim. Well, I should think he'd want you to. He needs your help, doesn't he? Yes, but... You see, Uncle Jim and I don't get along too well. He doesn't like dogs, for one thing. Is that why you insist on living here alone in the cabin, not moving in with him? That's one reason. You see, Blackie doesn't like him, and... I've always let Blackie stay in the cabin with me. Why doesn't Blackie like him? Uncle Jim kicked him once when Blackie was just a pup. He's never forgotten it. Let's see... Down, down, Blackie. Just a minute. Come on, Blackie. I'll have to tie you up. That's your uncle? Yes. When he comes in, I have to tie Blackie to bed. 
Uncle Jim's afraid of him. Oh? Uh, come on. Uh, there you are, boy. Now, lie down. All right, Uncle Jim, come in. Quiet, King. Lie down, boy. Hello, Uncle Jim. Hello, Bob. Well, how are you, Sergeant? Fine, thank you. Hey, uh, is that dog you see? Of course, he won't hurt you. Hey, I never trust any of them. That dog of Bob's would just as soon take a hunk out of you as look at you. Dogs don't like people who are afraid of them. They can always sense it. Well, I can't help not liking them. <laughs> oh, terrible thing about Ned, wasn't it? It certainly was. I've been trying to get Bob to move into my cabin with me. I... Lonesome for him, all alone here without his dad. I'm not lonesome as long as I have Blackie. Well, I sure don't want him in my cabin. Even if he was gentle, he's too big. No, I swear, Bob, I think that dog is the reason you don't want to get off the collar. If I went, I'd take him with me. Hey, Sergeant. Maybe you can talk some sense into Bob. I'll give him money enough for his father's share in our mind to put him through college. Now, after that, he'll have a profession to be able to take care of himself. What do you think, Sergeant? That's something you'll have to decide for yourself, Bob. I'll be out of the mine tomorrow to start work, Uncle Jim. Well, all right. Like the sergeant says, I guess, it's up to you to decide. Sergeant Preston had gone back to Dawson City the following day. For two days, Bob had worked hard at the mine, taking out the loose dirt and rubble. That night, snugly wrapped in fur robes, he slept soundly in his cabin with Blackie lying on the floor beside his cot. Suddenly, the big dog raised his head in the darkness. His ears pricked forward, and a low growl rumbled in his throat. At the sound, Bob stirred and raised his head. Uh, what's wrong, Blackie? Uh, you hear something, boy? Uh, now, wait up. Put my boots on. <laughs> All right, boy, I'll let you out. Suppose you heard some kind of animal, huh? Yeah. Wait till I light a match and find the door. There we are. Get him, boy. Oh, my God. Better put a bark on. There we go. I'm coming, fella. Hold him, boy. What is it? He's got something up that tree. Hey, go away. He will try to kill me. Kiga. That's you? Take the away. He will chase me here. Back, Blackie. Get back, boy. Now. Why are you prowling around here at this time of night, Tiga? Come on down. I'll hold, Blackie. Uh, Easy, boy. Right. Come here, Blackie. Come on. Me go home now. But you live way over near the creek. What are you looking for? Did you drop something? You take dog in cabin. Me find it. Here's something. I guess this is what you dropped. A knife. Me pull knife when dog comes. You've been drinking, Tiga. I'd better keep this knife for tonight. You go on home. I'll give it to you when you're sober. Me want knife now. Go on home, I said. You want me to let this dog go? That's my knife. You give back. I'll give you half a minute to leave or I'll let this dog take care of you. Are you going? Me go, me go. You be sorry. He'll get you good. All right. All right. All right. Oh, he's gone. Come on back in the cabin. I wonder if he was trying to steal something when you heard him. He was mighty close to our cabin. Oh, I, I'm glad I have you, old boy. It was the following evening. Blackie, chained to the cot in the corner, lay with his nose between his front feet. But his eyes followed every move Jim Rance made as he talked to Bob. I can't imagine what that half-breed could have been doing around here last night. He... He was probably trying to steal some meat out of your shed. Huh? He didn't go near the shed, Uncle Jim. Huh? I saw his tracks in the snow this morning. They led right to my door. Well, he never liked your father, but that don't mean he'd hold a grudge against you. Why didn't he like Dad? Well, a long time ago, your dad knocked him down. He caught him stealing food out of a cache. Tiggy hated him for it. Well, that's funny. I wonder why Dad never told me about it. I suppose he forgot about it. When did it happen? Oh, quite a while ago. I don't remember exactly. I think uh, we were on our way to Dawson for some supplies or something. But Dad always told me everything. And that was certainly exciting enough. He'd hardly forget it. Oh, maybe he thought it might be you nervous. Anyway, why don't you come over and live with me? It'll be safer. Oh, I'm safe enough here, Uncle Jim, as long as Black is with me. I'd rather live by myself than give him up. Well, have it your own way. I, I won't stand for that dog in my cabin, though. Uh, yes, I'd better get home now. 
got our day's work ahead of us. We'll soon have the mine all cleaned out again. Yeah. Should be able to start getting gold out pretty soon. Yep, in a couple of days, I'd say. Uh, do you want me to call for you on the way to the mine in the morning? No, no, I, uh, I've got some work to do in my cabin in the morning. I'll, I'll be there later. Uh, you go on ahead and start work on the mine. All huh? right. I'll try to get an early start. It was rather late the next morning when Bob walked hurriedly toward the mine, with Blackie frisking along beside him. As they approached a steep slope that loomed up beside the path, a snowshoe rabbit darted out of a thicket. Blackie, with a joyful bark, pursued it. As the dog disappeared, there was a sudden ominous sound from above. Rock, snow, and ice came crashing down the side of the mountain. Bob was motionless with fright for a moment, and then ran desperately to get out of the way of the avalanche. But a piece of rock struck him a glancing blow. He fell. Loose dirt and snow showered over him as he lay face down, helpless and unconscious. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Gee, imagine Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are offering everyone a complete miniature model farm. Golly, look at those swell models you get right on these new packages. Yes, kids, anyone can build these exciting models of farm buildings, equipment, and animals simply by getting these new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. There are as many as six colorful models printed on a single package, and there are eight different packages. In all, 46 detailed scale models. And they don't cost a single extra penny. Look at all the models you get. Just on package number one. You get the farmhouse, garage and pickup truck. And milk and hay wagon. Dobbin the horse. Queenie the collie and Bossy the cow. What's more, these models are easy to build, too. See, all packages are pre-cut and scored. Assembling is a cinch. No paste or glue is necessary. Boy, look at that big red barn on package number three. It's got a sliding door. Yes, the big red barn has a sliding door. Other farm buildings have windows and doors that open and close. And all models stand by themselves. Gee, what fun you can have with this Quaker model farm. That's right, Sandra. And best of all, anyone can start building these models right away. There's no waiting. Nothing to send in, either. No money, box tops, or coupons. All you do is get the new model farm packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Say, wheat and rice shot from guns is my favorite cereal. Mine, too. Well, what could be sweller? These wonderful new models now come right on the packages. And remember, there are eight different packages. Forty-six swell models in all. And mind you, they come only with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So get busy. For fun, games, and excitement, start building your Quaker model farm right away. It couldn't be easier. There's no waiting. Simply go to your grocer and ask for the new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. As the avalanche roared down the slope covering Bob Johnson, Blackie, returning from his pursuit of the rabbit, saw his master fall. But by the time the big dog reached him, his body was completely covered by snow and rubble. Frantically, Blackie began to dig, whining and whimpering. At last, he reached the fur hood of his master. Desperately, the big dog tugged at it, lifting Bob's face from the snow, only to have it drop back again. Blackie barked helplessly. He knew he couldn't drag the unconscious form from the thick heap piled above it. It was then that he heard the bark of a dog, and the sound of a dog team from the main trail that paralleled the path to the mine. Blackie raced toward the sound through the trees, and barked frantically as he saw Sergeant Preston approaching on the trail. Blackie! Well, Blackie, where's Bob, fellow? Well, that's strange. Seems to be in trouble. Want us to follow you, boy? Blackie, running into the woods and then back toward the sergeant, barked furiously. On your husky, hey, King, hey. With King leading the way, the sergeant turned the dog team into the woods and followed. When they emerged at the base of the slope, Blackie was standing beside the half-buried form of his master. Oh, King, hey, it's Bob. Never mind, Blackie. I'll get him out. He's still alive. We got him home, old boy. Don't you worry. Oh, oh, oh. 
It was some time later that Bob opened his eyes. He was lying in his cabin, and Sergeant Preston was standing beside his cot. King lay quietly in a corner, but Blackie licked his master's hand and whined anxiously. How did you get here? Easy, Bob. Sergeant Preston, what happened? You were caught in an avalanche. Blackie must have heard me coming on the trail led me to you. Oh, I... I remember now. Something hit me. My head... I bandaged it. You'll be all right soon. There were no bones broken, but you were badly bruised in spots. You were very lucky. Was Blackie hurt? No. I guess he wasn't caught in it. I remember now. He chased a rabbit. Then I heard what sounded like an explosion. An explosion? You mean you heard the rock cracking? Oh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe I just imagined it, but... It sounded like an explosion. Like somebody planted a blast on that slope to start an avalanche. Did you see anyone around just before the avalanche? No, no, I didn't, Sergeant. It's lucky that Blackie was with you. Hadn't been for him coming to get us, you'd have smothered or frozen to that. It is lucky I have, Blackie. I'm beginning to wonder if... What were you going to say, Bob? Uh, I guess I'm just imagining things. Well, tell me what's bothering you. Well, I... It's Uncle Jim. Hand me Blackie's lease, will you please, Sergeant? All right. There it is. Thanks. I'll let your uncle in. Quiet, boy. Quiet, quiet. There you are. Hello, Sergeant. Hey, I thought that was your team outside. Come in, Ryan. Blackie's tied. Me and Bob is here? Bob was hurt. Hello, Uncle Jim. Hey, Bob. What happened? Didn't you hear the avalanche? It happened right near the mine. I got caught in it. Avalanche? Well, no. I haven't been to the mine. I, I spent the whole morning working in my cabin. I just came over here to borrow some tea. Are you hurt much? His head was cut, but he'll be up by tomorrow. Well, could we take him over to my cabin? It's bigger, and we could leave the dog in this Why, one. Sergeant Preston is going to stay with me tonight, Uncle Jim. He has to stay somewhere, so I asked him to stay here. Oh, I see. Anyway, Blackie saved my life, and I'm not going to leave him. So he saved you, huh? Dogs are handy to have around, Rance. You should learn to like them. Yeah, I'm afraid that's impossible. I, I don't feel comfortable in here with that dog of yours loose. The tea is over in the cupboard, Uncle Jim. Right. There's nothing you can do here. Sergeant Preston will take care of it. Well, if there's nothing I can do, I'll get some tea and be running along. I'm sure glad you weren't hurt seriously, Bob. I'll be able to work tomorrow. Did you get enough tea? Yeah, this is plenty. Now, if there's anything I can do, just let me know, huh? Bob will be all right, I'm sure. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Sergeant, I... I hope you didn't mind when I told him you were going to stay here. As a matter of fact, I'll be glad to stay, Bob. You had some reason for saying that. Your face looked, well, a little frightened, I thought. What is it, Bob? What's bothering you? Uncle Jim didn't stay at his cabin all morning. He didn't? How do you know? Because I went to his cabin before starting the mine. I told him I planned to go early this morning, so he said not to wait for him. He had some work to do. But I overslept this morning. I thought maybe he'd be ready to go with me by then, so I went to his cabin. He had already left. You sure he'd gone to the mine? Maybe he was out getting wood. No. No, I looked all over for him, and there were fresh tracks in the snow. His tracks. On the way to the mine. But why would he lie? Oh, I, I hate to be suspicious, but Uncle Jim keeps urging me to come to his cabin without Blackie. And other things have been happening. Tiga, that half-breed who lives on the other side of town, was prowling around my cabin with a knife the other night. Oh? Uncle Jim said he hated my father, but Dad never mentioned him to me or warned me about him. And today, I, I'm sure I heard an explosion before that avalanche started. Mm. I wonder why your Uncle Jim didn't tell me at the inquest about this half-breed who disliked your father. I suppose he didn't think of it until Tiga came prowling around here the other night. It's strange he didn't think of it. He knows how careful your father was when he handled explosives. Seems to me your Uncle Jim should have suspected something before either of us did. Yes. Yes, that's right. He'll be here again in the morning, Bob. I'll stay with you tonight, and perhaps we can make a few plans. The following morning, when Jim Rance stopped to see Bob, his concern for the boy seemed so genuine that Bob's conscience hurt him. And he was sure he was wrong to doubt this man who had been so close to him for many years. I went to the trading post yesterday, Bob. I brought you the tea I borrowed, along with a few things you might like to eat. Thanks, Uncle Jim. I 
It was nice of you to think of it. Well, you better not try working for a few days. Uh, stay home and rest. Don't you think so, Sergeant? That's the advice I gave him. Are you going to stay here for a while, Sergeant? Why, uh, I hadn't planned to because I have to take some supplies up to Moose Jaw. But one of my dogs took sick this morning. I don't like to put him in harness for a day or two, so it might be better if I wait over until Blix is better. Well, Sergeant, why don't you leave Blix here and take Blackie in his place? I'll be resting up anyway, and he should have some exercise. Then you get Blix when you bring my dog back. All right, Bob. I'll take you up on your offer. Blackie knows me. Gets along with King. You sure you can spare him for two or three days? Of course I can. When are you leaving, sir? It's all right with Bob. I'll leave in about an hour. Should be able to make, oh, about 15 miles today. Sure, it's all right with me. But you, you want to come over and stay at my cabin tonight, Bob? You're welcome as long as you come without that dog, you... No, no thanks, Uncle Jim. I'm not afraid to stay alone. Don't worry about me. It was a short time later that Jim Rance arrived at a small, shabby cabin on the other side of the forest. Without stopping to knock, he entered. Bless me. Tiga, the half-breed, rose startled beside the broken table, his hand on his hunting knife. Hello, Tiga. Oh, may not hear you come. I'm sorry, I scared you. You bring fire water? Yeah, but you might like some, even though you haven't filled your bargain. This is part payment in advance. Might help to steady your nerves. You mean you try again? Uh, don't give up easy, Tiga. What we do... You're going to his cabin tonight. No, me not go, cabin. Me not go near dog. That dog won't be there tonight. He's gone. This time I'm going with you to help. What me do? You go into the cabin after Bob's asleep and take care of him. I'll do the rest. What you do? Set fire to the cabin. I'll make it look like an accident so nobody will suspect. There won't be any evidence against you. What happened to Dog? The Monty barred him. He won't be back for three days. You, you say Mounty? Yeah, he's a friend of Bob's. Me no do this if Mounty come back. No like. Oh, yes, you will, Tiggy. If you don't, I'll see that the Monty finds out you were connected with the death of Bob's father. You wouldn't like that, would you? You know me do this. You fix dynamite. You tell, then you get in trouble with law. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't be. I was with Bob when his father was killed. You've been in trouble with the law before. I haven't. I'd never take your word against mine. Now, uh, when this is over, I'll give you plenty of money. Mm. You can get out of the country and never have to work the rest of your life. But if you don't do it, I'll drop a hint to the Marty about Bob's father. You're liable to hang. Uh, you give me money tonight? Sure. I'll bring it to Bob's cabin. And you can light out right away. Nobody will know where you went by the time it's discovered. Me do it. You be there tonight. I'll be there. You just do as I say. A pale moon filtered through the clouds and dimly lighted the small clearing in front of Bob's cabin. The temperature had risen and the wind had died. The forest was wrapped in deep silence. Then suddenly a twig snapped under the moccasined feet of Tika as he emerged from the shadows. Behind him... The stocky figure of Jim Rance appeared, and the two men stood for a moment whispering softly. He's asleep. There's no light. If the cabin door is locked, we'll have to wake him. If it isn't, I'll light a match so you can see where his cut is. No. No light match. Fire in stove, right yes, enough. That's right. You'll be able to see by then. I'll wait for you outside the door. You bring money? Yes. But you're not getting it until you do your job. Here's the door. Easy now. Jim waited tensely outside the cabin door as Tiga's shadow stole across the room. A dim firelight dancing through the holes in the door of the big stove in the middle of the room. Then suddenly there was a sharp cry from the cabin that died in a groan. And the hurried footsteps of the half-breed as he rushed back to the door. Did you get him? Yeah, me do. Now you give money, me go. Uh, sure, Tiggy. Here's your reward. <laughs> Gun. You'll not kill me. I caught you killing my nephew, didn't I? Well, this is where I... King, King! Oh, 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 get away! Get away from me! Oh, Tiggy! Oh, 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 shoot! Come back or the next shot won't be over your head. No, oh, no, shoot. Me come back. Take this gun away, Tiggy. Watch him, boy. Up that knife, Tiggy. All right, King. Back, fella. Let him up. Sergeant, you, your dog made a mistake and got me instead of this half-breed. Get up, Rance. Yeah. 
Hey, I thought I'd take you here. I saw him go into the cabin and caught him coming out with a knife. I sure got here in the nick of time. You can be a witness. He killed Bob. No, him tell me. So to... that was your plan, eh, Rance? You were going to kill Tigger so he couldn't tell that you were the one who planned all this. Oh, no, Sergeant. You got me wrong. I, I know it looks bad, but... Stop I... lying. I've been right beside the cabin since you and Tigger came. I heard you tell him what to do. You're both under arrest for attempted murder. Attempted murder? It's all right, Bob. You can come out now. But, Bob... But I heard him. Did that yellow mind sound all right, Sergeant? What? Sounded almost too good. I began to wonder if Tigger had really stabbed you. Him not hurt? We fixed up a dummy, Tigger. Bob was under the cot. You see, Rance, we expected you tonight. So it was, Uncle Jim. He was trying to get rid of me. Uh, wait, Bob, what about I... my father? Sergeant, you think he... Right, it was anything... Tigger who killed your father. I didn't have anything to do with it. You I... give Tigger dynamite. You tell me what to do. No, no, he's lying. You're the one who's lying. Put out your hands. I'm handcuffing you two together. No, no, Sergeant. You can tell your stories and your case comes up for trial. But I... I just can't believe that Uncle Jim would have done... Bob, I think you'll find your mine is a rich one. Your uncle must have known about the rich vein of gold your father was talking about. It's all yours now. Jim Rance won't need gold where he's going. I owe my life to you, Sergeant. Blackie's the one who saved your life. Oh, uh... You'd better get him. He's tied up in the woods with my dog team. I'm certainly grateful to you and King. When you get back, I think we'll let Blackie and King guard these prisoners till morning. <laughs> yes, old fellow. Looks as if this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. You got a pencil handy? Then write this down now. Write down Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Yes, remember the name Quaker Puffed Wheat, Quaker Puffed Rice. These famous breakfast cereals shot from guns now offer you, right on the packages, a complete model farm at no extra cost. There are eight different special new packages. And you get as many as six key new detail scale models of farm buildings and animals on a single package. Forty-six different swell models in all. So go to your grocer pronto. Ask for special new packages of delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. Start building your Quaker model farm right away without wasting another day. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of... The sergeant's right. Mike Rafferty was a big man, one of the strongest in the Yukon. And he had an idea that might makes right. It was during the Mission Creek Gold Rush that King and I tried to prove he was wrong. And it came very close to being our last case together. Be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.